JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, two men believed to be key players in gun importation arrested. The police are reporting that two men have been arrested in connection with Friday's major siege of guns and ammunition at a warehouse in Kingston. Head of the Criminal Investigations Branch, Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbailey, indicated that the men are believed to be key players in the illegal importation of firearms. Bailey said that arrangements are being made for them to be interviewed in the presence of their attorneys. He also disclosed that the woman, who was listed as a person of interest, Jadian Edwards, subsequently turned herself into detectives and was interviewed and released. Bailey is encouraging all law-abiding citizens to support the police by sharing information about guns, gunmen and gangs. The Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations Branch, CTOC, was called in on March 4 when 18 pistols, 3 rifles, 51 magazines, and 2,216 assorted rounds of ammunition were seized at the Kingston-based warehouse. The illegal weapons were discovered when custom officers were examining barrels and noticed abnormalities. The contraband enforcement team of Jamaica Customs was called in and the firearms were found during a search. Soldier refuses to hand over gun after a woman's body found in car. Police of Judge J.D.F. Sergeant in Oscar, a prostitute, was found dead two weeks ago. Telofius Trace was charged with failure to hand over his firearm for inspection after police say he repeatedly refused to give his gun to the lawmen for ballistic testing. Tracy was taken into custody when police began probing the killing of the prostitute on Caledonia Avenue, Kingston 5 on Saturday, February 26. He has reportedly not been complying with police investigations. The St. Andrew Central Police had reported that about 4.20 a.m., the Crossroads Police responded to an assignment of a motor vehicle collision. On arrival of the team, a grey Honda Fit motor car was seen with a woman's body protruding from the front passenger seat. She had multiple gunshot wounds. She was taken to hospital where she was pronounced dead. The deceased has since been identified as Oshin Lawrence. Investigations that followed revealed that the motor car belonged to the JDF sergeant, who is also a licensed farm holder. It was located and taken into custody. Cops charge 44-year-old man relieved of gun by 16-year-old. A 44-year-old man, who was reportedly relieved of a gun by a 16-year-old boy during an altercation two weeks ago, has been charged by the police. Gavin Skelton, from Chisholm Avenue, St. Andrew, is charged with illegal possession of a firearm and assault of common law. Skelton and the firearm were handed over to the police following the incident, which occurred on Sunday, February 27. Reports are that about 2 p.m., both males had a disagreement. The police reported that Skelton left and returned when he allegedly pointed a gun at the teen. A struggle ensued, during which the teen used a machete to inflict wounds to Skelton and managed to relieve him of the gun. The police were summoned and the weapon, a 9mm pistol with a magazine containing one cartridge, was handed over to the lawmen along with the accused. Skelton was treated at a medical facility for his injuries and taken into police custody. Following investigations, he was charged. Portmore man charged for killing parents demanded. A psychiatric evaluation of Simeon Ramsey, who is implicated in the death of his parents in Portmore, St. Catherine, last month, has revealed that he is unfit to plead. He was ordered to return to the St. Catherine Parish Court on April 12. In court, his attorneys Tom Tavares Vincent QC and Marcus Moore asked for a detailed psychiatric evaluation for the purpose of pleading. It was revealed by the lawyers that the accused had a history and was undergoing treatment when the incident took place. When the accused was being remanded, it took much coaxing and a gentle touch from Tavares Finson to get him to the holding area. On the day in question, Simeon reportedly used a knife to kill his father, 69-year-old Cesar Ramsey, who is a minister of religion and a painting contractor, and his mother, 55-year-old Phyllis Ramsey. At the time of her death, she was the acting vice principal at St. Andrew Proprietary School. Investigators say Cess was stabbed in his chest and Phyllis was stabbed twice in her neck with an open blade kitchen knife. 107 parcels of ganja prepared for export seized in St. Elizabeth. Police have seized 107 parcels of ganja and a twin engine boat that was loaded following a patrol at the Pirate Fishing Beach in St. Elizabeth on Tuesday. The police say the large quantity of ganja was prepared for export. Police reports are that about 4 a.m., a team was on patrol when they observed men acting suspiciously at the beach. The men reportedly ran from the area and made good their escape. The police seized 16 large bags containing the 107 parcels of ganja and seven containers with fuel 
and 30 Nicaraguan dollars. Some people not interested in being paid for giving information on illegal guns. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, says a number of people who provided tips about illegal guns in their communities were not interested in being paid for the information. The JCF has reported an increase in the number of illegal firearms seized so far this year. Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, head of the JCF's Corporate Communications Unit, said people have been responding positively to social media campaigns on providing information about illegal guns. I realize that the more we have these campaigns and the more we communicate to the Jamaican public what it is that we're doing and the successes that we're having, they are becoming more confident that if they share information then, at least, it will be acted on, SSB Lindsay revealed. The government has announced that $250,000 to $500,000 will be paid to individuals who provide information on illegal guns. Murders drop 7.4% as other major crimes remain low, says JCF. The police are reporting a 7.4% decline in murders since the start of the year. The latest crime statistics show that 261 people were killed up to Sunday, March 6, when compared to the 282 murders reported for the corresponding period last year. This continues the downward trend in murder figures since last month. The latest Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF Periodic Crime Statistics Review, shows that the St. James Police Division leads the island's murder count with 44 cases. This represents a 15.8% increase when compared to the 38 homicides reported in the division up to March 6 last year. The St. Catherine North Police Division follows with 28 murders so far this year, with Westmoreland close behind with 27 homicides. However, St. Mary had the highest percentage increase in murders, with a 700% rise. There were eight murders committed in the parish up to Sunday, compared with one for the corresponding period in 2021. Portland is the least murderous parish in Jamaica, with only three incidents being reported this year. There were only two cases of murders reported this time last year. Alongside murders, incidents of shootings, rapes, robberies and break-ins are continuing to trend downwards, the JCF said. This has resulted in an overall decline of 15.8% in the national crime statistics so far this year. A total of 831 serious and violent crimes were reported up to Sunday when compared to 987 incidents reported up to March 6 last year. A further breakdown of the crime data shows that there were 193 cases of shootings over the period under review, compared to 245 for the same period last year, which represented a decrease of 21.2%. Also, there have been fewer incidents of rape, with a decrease of 48.6%. So far this year, between January 1 and March 6, there have been 54 cases of rape, in comparison to the one John 5 reported over the same period last year. Robbery saw a 14.7% decrease, with 168 incidents this year, compared to 197 in 2021. Some 155 break-ins were recorded up to March 6 this year, down from the 158 observed in the corresponding period last year, representing a reduction of three cases, or 1.9%. Organization was known to execute members. Retired investigator testifies. A retired gang investigator this morning testified that the Klansman gang was known for executing its members. Within the Klansman system, they tend to prey upon themselves. Friend kill friend, said the retired police inspector, who had investigated several gangs including the St. Catherine-based Klansman and one other gangs. However, he explained that while the duty is usually given by the leader, it's difficult to investigate these matters as the leader tends not to participate in the killings. The 31-year-old police veteran also told the court that the gang operated its own justice system. He indicated that the gang had a place called Judgment Yard, located off Martin Street in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, where it carried out trials and determined who should be killed, beaten, or imposed any other punishment. The trial has heard testimony from one of the former gang members that the reputed leader of the Wondon faction of the gang, Andre Blackman Bryan, had given orders to his alleged foot soldiers to kill other members who he felt had betrayed or had lied to the gang. He had also testified about an incident where one of the members was tried by the gang and beaten. Similarly, during the playing of one of the secret recordings, the court also heard that Blackman had given instructions to kill alleged members who he felt had turned against him and was providing the police with information while he was in prison. The inspector also told the court, that Klansman was known for forming an alliance with the police in order to get information. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.